here we go. So we specify, as I've shown, a little header here. And I'm using variable specific heats. So I, I specify the pressure ratio is 11. And then I have a little column of, it reminds me, how, how did I determine each of these states? State 1, state 2S, 2, state X, state 3, 3S, 4, and Y. All right? Now, the difference between 2S and 2 is a little redundant because the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 100% and the isentropic efficiency of the turbine is 100%. But all I would need to do is go in here and change it up, and I think I did in another problem. And then I have a new problem, uh, and, and it would account for it. But, but uh, let's continue to look at this table of properties. So I have the state numbers, then I have the pressure, and you see it's 1. And you can go through. It just jumps up. Now I have the high pressure. It's 11, the pressure ratio, 11 times 100 kPa, so it's 1,100 kPa. And then it jumps back down when you go through the turbine from 3 to 4, back down to 100. Let's take a look at the temperatures. I bolded the information which is given. So the P1 and the T1 are given, as well as T3, the maximum temperature of, whoops, it should be 1450 right here to be consistent with the Excel. But um, you can see how I go from this state 1 to 2S. I use, using the air tables, you look up the PR. Then you re recall PR at 2 divided by PR at 1 is equal to the actual pressure 2 divided by the actual pressure 1. You do know the pressure ratio. You looked up PR1, and now you calculate PR2 is just 11 times PR1. And there you go right there. Okay. Using PR, really what we said is, is I know the pressure and its isentropic expansion, or not expansion, compression through the compressor. Now I can look up H as well as T. Then I say, okay, now that I know these H's, what is the isentropic work of the compressor? It's the difference between these two H's, is it not? So it's 595.8 minus 300.12. It's around 296 kilojoules per kilogram. If I had anything but 100%, but if, because it's 100%, the actual work is still 296. And so the I, I would then update to get the the enthalpy at state 2, knowing the actual work. But these enthalpies are the same. Okay. Now I jump all the way. I forget about x for a minute. I forget about x for a minute. I'll come back to it. Go to 3 because state 3 is fixed. It's, you're told that it's 1450 Kelvin. You can look up H as well as PR. Then you have you divide by the pressure ratio as you go from 3 to 4s. And so it's 522 divided by 11, you have 47.5. Use that to look up H and T if you want to look at it. You don't really need it. You really need the H's for 4. Get the work of the turbine isentropic. That would be right here. 755. It's the same. Uh, the actual work is the same because its uh, efficiency is 100%. So the actual exit enthalpy at 4 is the same as 4s. And now I know how hot it is. Look at it. It's coming out 800 degrees. And when it's coming in, it's all it's a little below 600 degrees. So before I burn the precious fuel to bring it up to 1450, why don't I try and bring up the temperature using that regenerative heat exchanger as much as possible. So what we do is we say it, the delta H right here is the maximum, true, because it's the regenerator, uh, the maximum Q in the regenerator would be H4 minus H2. 
820.48 minus 595.8. So it's around 225. That's the actual maximum. Now, if you multiply that by the effectiveness specified to be 50%, we expect now 112 kilojoules per kilogram transferred. Now, because the kilogram of air is both the same for the hot as well as the cold side, you know, you don't have a different flow rate for the hot side and uh, cold side, so it's simpler. And so now we know that, okay, that's the actual change. Now I can finally fix X. So X is this H plus Q actual to be 112. So you get H at state 2. Likewise, H at Y is H4 minus this 112. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, and it's always going to be that because of conservation. That's right, conservation energy. It's it's adiabatic heat exchanger. What comes out of the hot goes into the cold. Now, if this changes to, let's say, 100%, well, this would change to 225. 225, if that changed to 225, then it would be 820 minus 225. Likewise, it would be uh, that plus 225. And it would basically, this number would become 820.48, and this number would become... 595.80. Yeah, but uh, there you go. So um, now let's take a look. What I did was organize the Qs on this side plus the Q of the cycle below it and the works right here with the work of the cycle summed below it. So the compressor is adiabatic, the turbine's adiabatic, but we do have still from two to three and i should have probably changed that two to three shouldn't i hmm that should be q not from two to three but from x to three right because that's the external heat in so that would be this much let's do a quick check it's going to be h three one five seven five point six minus hx 708 point I'm just going to put one there and now that's a 5 that's a 7 that's a 6 and this is what is it an 8 867.5 check so it's it, it is qx minus uh, qx to 3 which is the the the, the h 3 minus hx is q x to three that's how much heat goes in nothing for the turbine and then for the the heat exchanger what we're doing here is i should have not said four to one that's q well that's a bad looking q let's put q y to one y to one let me jump back and look at that other slide because a lot of students will mess this up you still have a heat exchanger here, and you still have to reject some to the atmosphere. And it, but it's from Y to 1, not from 4 to 1. Okay, and I believe the textbook, when they introduce this, they don't show this heat exchanger explicitly. They kind of just leave this out. And that's needed if you're going to look at the balance, the Q net for the cycle. So you, you need to include in this. Okay. And so when I add up the Q net, I have five, well, four, 460 kilojoules per kilogram. Let's look at the works. First of all, the works are consistent. The work of the cycle equals the net heat for the cycle. And um, let's take a look. Compressor requires that much. The turbine gives that much in the difference. So when we take a look at the thermal efficiency, it's improved. It's improved significantly. It's now 53% for that pressure ratio of 11. How come it's higher than the predicted cold uh, breaking cycle efficiency, that analytic expression for the efficiency? Why is it even higher? It's because 
This was without the regenerator. This is with the regenerator. It's 53% thermally efficient. And then the back work ratio is a whopping 40%, still higher, 39.1%. It's still very high. Okay. So hopefully all of that makes sense. And um, let's uh, click to another problem. Also, what you can do is uh, that problem we just solved was 50% was the value for the regenerator effectiveness. And when we came up, we calculated the thermal efficiency, what, 53%? have to go back and look right quick. 53%, uh, yes, it was, 53%. If you decrease the regenerator effectiveness, let's say it goes to zero. What does that mean? It didn't transfer anything. If it didn't transfer anything, here's the hot side. It comes in at 4 and goes out at Y. What is the temperature at Y compared to the temperature at 4? It's the same. Likewise, if it comes in at 2 and goes out at X on the cold side, what is the temperature at X compared to the temp? It's the same. It's as if the regenerator wasn't even there. So when you compare at 0%, that's actually no regenerator, and that's the same thermal efficiency as predicted by that equation.